So our education system um, has a lot to be desired. And one of the things I'm saying is like, uh, is it's making all these kids think that college is the end all be all, and it is not. Uh, we need to try and prepare kids for different kinds of paths instead of saying college, college, college. Yeah. Because they're going to college, they're getting loaded up with record levels of debt. College has gotten two and a half times more expensive, even though it has not gotten two and a half times better. One of the things I've discovered is that we're overemphasizing college, and what we're underemphasizing is technical, vocational, and apprenticeship work. Because a lot of that work, believe it or not, is actually really hard to automate. Like, uh, you know, we're not going to automate an air conditioning repair person or a plumber mm -hmm. anytime soon. And for sure, craftsmen, people who build yes. things. And, and it's good for your mental health yes. and, and a bunch of other things. So right now we're going to automate away. It's a lot easier to automate away a lot of repetitive cognitive work than it is uh, non-repetitive manual work. Mm. Because like actual robot digits, you know, it's like... Because if you can imagine what it would take to have a robot plumber like come into your house, I mean, that stuff's really, really tricky. Yeah. And there's a lot of fine motor work. They have to like unscrew pipes and like stuff. That stuff's not going to get automated for a long time. Mm. You know what is going to get automated? A lot of like entry level cognitive tasks, a lot of journalism tasks, a lot of bookkeeping, a lot of stuff that college graduates think they're going to get a job in, but mm. then those jobs are going to disappear. I was a corporate attorney for those five unhappy months, and my friends are working on. Uh, AI that can automate away a lot of basic legal work, you know. So these college these college grads are like, oh, snap! Don't know what to do. Me, I'll go to law school and like load up with another 120k in debt, and then like the the legal jobs are not going to be there for them. Some people imagine that the coming automation revolution will be a one-time event. Let's say in 2025, you have the big automation revolution, lots of jobs disappear, lots of new jobs appear, we have a couple of rough years, and then everything settles down to a new equilibrium in the job market and in the economy. But it will not be like that. It will be a cascade of ever bigger disruptions. You have a big revolution in 2025. You have an even bigger revolution in 2035, because by then AI is so much better. And an even bigger revolution in 2045. Which means that to stay relevant, you will have to reinvent yourself, not just once, but repeatedly. Like every 10 years, 15 years, to reinvent yourself. And the main obstacle for doing that might well be psychological, more than economic or technological. It's just very, very hard to reinvent yourself, especially after a certain age. When you're 15 or when you're 18, you're basically creating yourself, you're inventing yourself, and it is very, very difficult. But it's even, it's much more difficult to do it when you're 40 or 50. You probably know by now that adults don't like to change. They tell you to change all the time, but they don't like to change themselves, because it's very difficult. So the most important goals of education in the 21st century are probably to develop your emotional intelligence and your mental balance, because you will need a lot of mental balance and mental resilience to deal with a very hectic world, to keep learning throughout your life, and to repeatedly reinvent yourself and stay ahead of the algorithms. It's often the problem of the parents giving them pressure to go into college as well because they don't want the kid to become a loser. And if the kid, you know, like where I grew up in Boston, if you went into the trades, if you abandoned like the idea of Go higher college, learning yeah. and going to college and just went right into like learning to be a carpenter or something like that, people would look at you like, oh, you sold yourself short. But there's so many people that I know that went to school that just got university degrees and then they got out and they were fucked. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's so common. It's so common that they thought there was going to be this path and this path just didn't exist once they got out or it was, it was far, far more difficult than was 
than they were led to believe. Yeah, if you look at it, about 32% of Americans graduate from college right now, and that level has been more or less constant for a long time. It's not like, hey, I've got another 20% I could get into college. Mm -hmm. Like right now, the college completion rate in six years is about 59%. So like four out of 10 people who start college are not graduating in six years, and a lot of them are just not going to finish ever. So like the, the people that have other paths available to them, we have to build those paths up. And this is one reason why I'm so into the freedom dividend instead of something like free college. Because why would you subsidize something that only the top third of the population is going to use? You know, and, and it's a highly inefficient, costly system anyway. Like, yeah. plowing money into that, you're much better off putting a thousand bucks a month into every 18-year-old's hands. Then if they go to college, great, college is partially paid for. They go to trade school, great, trade school is partially paid for. They start their own business, they do something creative, like they want to do something to help. That's great too. Like you can actually start building more varied paths and make it so that people don't feel like I need to get into this institution or else my life's going to be over. You talked a little, Yuval, about uh, developing emotional balance and emotional intelligence. That's interesting to me. How would you suggest that young people begin to undertake that? Oh, that, that's the big question. It's something which is much more difficult to teach than to teach history of physics or mathematics. Um, it's really about getting to know yourself better. I know it's the oldest advice in the book. Know yourself. You have all these philosophers and saints and gurus for thousands of years telling people know yourself. So there is nothing new about the advice. What is new is that now you have competition. Like if you lived in the age of Socrates or Jesus and you didn't make the effort to know yourself, well, nobody else could, could really look into you, in, into you. But now you have this competition. So the key insight is we don't know what will be the nature of work in 20 or 30 years. So if we knew, okay, there'll be a lot of work in X, we can prepare children for, for the skills they need for that particular line of work, but we just don't know. So again, maybe to take an example from the context of school, um, if you go to do an exam, maybe the most important thing you can learn from the exam is how to deal with failure. When if you got a hand on the exam, that's wonderful, okay, great. But if you got, if you failed, that's an even more important thing to learn. How do you pick yourself up and how do you go forward from failure? This is going to help if you manage to do that. If you fail in an, ex in an exam and you know how to deal with it, that will be far, far more important for your future than getting a straight A.